So, it's your first time on VR Chat, or maybe it's not your first time on VR Chat, but you now want to upload your very own content because you're getting more interested in the game. Well, this is a video for you. Today, I'm going to be showing you the new and updated version on how to upload your very own avatar in a quick, simple fashion that should take you no less than 10 minutes. So, let's get started. For starters, you need to make sure that you are a new user rank because a visitor rank or a nuisance rank will not be able to upload any content. So make sure that you are a new user rank. An easy cheat is to buy VRC Plus. If you are made of money, go ahead. So once that you establish that you are a new user rank, we need to find the currently supported Unity version for VRChat creation, which in this case is going to be Unity 2019.4.31. In my opinion, the easiest way to go about installing Unity is to first download Unity Hub from the Unity Store. So, once we download Unity Hub, you will basically just open this file and proceed with all the directions and it will ask you for a file path and a couple other things that you will just have to follow the on-screen instructions. But once you have Unity Hub, it will appear somewhere on your desktop. With Unity Hub installed, we can open it and we can see all our projects, which in your case, you will have none. I have a couple here because I am a creator myself. And once you have your projects open right here, go ahead and click installs. Installs is gonna show you what installations of Unity you have, what versions you have. So in this case, I currently have 2018.420, which was previously the supported version for VRChat, but now they have now upgraded it to 2019.4.31. So. In order to install the new editor, we're going to click install editor and it will give you some recommended versions right here that are actually uh, too new for what we want right now. So we're going to hit archive and it will say can't find the version you're looking for, visit our download archive. So we're going to click that. And here you're going to have a whole new table of different Unity installs. In this case, we want to hit Unity 2019. And we're going to scroll down a little bit until we see Unity 2019.4.31. And then you can click Unity Hub for a quick installation, or you can also download it right here on the Windows and Unity Editor 64-bit. Once your Unity version is installed, it will appear in your installs right here, like we mentioned earlier. And so then you will now go to projects and create a new project. It will now ask you if you want a 2D, 3D, 3D with extra. We just want a 3D project. And you can name your project as well. In this case, I'll just say tutorial. And I don't know what happened there. Okay, create. While Unity is loading up, I think it's a great time to head over to the VR chat page and download the SDK3 package that we'll need for VR chat creation. So go to your web browser. Find your VR chat profile, which in this case, just Google VR chat and log in. And then once you get to your VR chat login page, you're going to want to go to download on the left side. And that will bring you here where it shows you the different SDK packages under manual SDK installation. We'll expand this and you will see there is a download worlds SDK as well as a download avatars SDK. So both of these SDK packages are SDK3, which is the current platform that we need to use. So in this case, we're going to be using Avatars SDK. So we're going to download that. I understand and I'm downloading. Once your SDK3 package is downloaded, all we need is to have an avatar model that we want to use and we're going to import that into our Unity project as well as the SDK3 package. So here is our Unity project. It is now loaded up. As you will see on the left, we have our hierarchy. On the right, we have our inspector. We'll use a little zoom so we can look at these things a bit easier. Here's our inspector and here's our hierarchy. In the hierarchy, you can see we have a main camera and a directional light. And you can see those two items right here in the center. The directional light is going to be the lighting for the scene. And the camera is going to be used for the game tab when we want to see game changes or when we see the splash screen when uploading the avatar. In short, the hierarchy is going to be used to see what objects are in your scene. For example, a cube. And then the inspector is going to be properties of whatever we click on in the hierarchy. So if I click on the cube, we can now see all the properties of the cube. And some of these properties are really basic. I thought we'd just go through them so that you can see the bare bones of Unity and get familiar with it. First of all, let's look at the transform. The transform is gonna be the position of where the object is. So if we set it to zero, 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 the object is going to be centered. Also note under the transform that we have rotation and scale. So scale is going to make it larger in different areas and rotation is gonna rotate it in different directions. 
Below the transform, you can see many other settings. As you can see, Unity has plenty to do, but I will not be covering that in this video. Last but certainly not least, we can activate the cube and deactivate it by clicking this little check mark. With the click of a check mark, you can see that the cube is appearing and disappearing. If you would like to keep the object or property turned on, but have the object invisible, there's a quick little tip you can do up here. Go to the object and click the eyeball. When you click this, the cube will no longer be visible. Additionally, if you click this little pointer finger, you'll notice that if I try to click on the cube, it won't let me anymore. Some of these little tools are very useful when you're trying to make minor changes. Moving on, let's not forget about the folders and assets. As you can see right here, these are our assets. And this is going to be our main folder for all the things that we import. When we import our SDK3, it will appear under this folder, often in a VRChat and VRChat examples folder. Right next to our asset folder is going to be the console. The console is going to be used to show us errors in the project. If you see a lot of errors in your console after importing avatars or objects, you might want to check the sources of the avatars or objects and make sure they're not from an old SDK or corrupted asset. A very easy way to make sure your project isn't broken before starting is to simply go up towards the play mode button and press play. If your project loads in play mode like this and your console is mostly free from errors, then you should be good to go. As long as there are no compile errors, then uploading probably won't be an issue. Now let's go ahead and import the SDK3. In this case, I'm just going to head to a folder that I use specifically for the starting packages, which I highly suggest you do. I will leave a link in the description and possibly a Google Drive for these items. Let's go ahead and import VRChat SDK3. Once we drag it into the assets, you'll see this pop up. This is going to show all the items that are going into our project. Depending on the package you're importing, you might want to turn off some of these items, but in this case, we want everything. So I'm going to select all, and I'm going to go ahead and import. While the SDK is importing, now would be a great time to find the avatar model that you would like to import into your project. In this case, I'm going to be using a VRChat default robot because it's very simple and it's not going to have any errors. Once my SDK3 is finished, I'm going to import this avatar. And just like with the last package, you can see when I import it, it's going to ask me all the things that are coming with it. We're going to go ahead and import. So now with the SDK3 loaded and the avatar, we can see this little VRChat robot folder. And we're going to open the assets for that. And we need to find the folder that has the actual prefab in it. So this one says prefab. And you can see right here, it says robot with this little gray box around it. And that's what we're gonna be dragging into our project. Let's go ahead and get rid of this cube here and take our robot and drag it into the hierarchy. You can also drag it into the middle area right here, but just remember when you do that, your position might be really skewered. So in this case, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna hit Control Z and we're just gonna drag it into the hierarchy on the left, which will instantly center it for us. The first thing that we can instantly see is that on the right in our inspector, we have missing scripts that are broken. Let's go ahead and right click and remove these. While we're over here on the inspector, let's go ahead and add a VRC avatar descriptor because we will need that to upload the avatar, set our parameters and menu. Let's move back over to the left real quick and let's unpack this prefab by right clicking it and unpack prefab completely. The reason we do this is so that we can expand other parts of the avatars and make changes as we see fit. The last package I suggest you install is Poyomi. Go to your folder and find Poyomi Tune, which in this case, I will provide a GitHub link that will provide you with the newest release of Poyomi Tune Shader. This link will always have the latest version of Poyomi, so you can go here and go ahead and download the Unity package and get it into your Unity project. So let's go ahead and import Poyomi. Poyomi is a really good shader to edit the materials on the avatar so that they are the highest quality. Occasionally, this will increase the avatar download size, but Poyomi is pretty optimized and almost everyone uses it and I highly suggest that you do as well. Changing your default materials on the avatar to Poyomi often instantly increases the overall look of the avatar. In this case, our bot is pretty simple, so it's only gonna have about one or two materials that we're going to update. Give Unity just a moment here. Like with everything you import, you will see it pop up under your assets folder as a subfolder. Let's go ahead and go back to our VRChat robot folder and go to its assets and then its material folder. Most avatars that you import will have a material folder, often with many materials. This one only has two. What I like to do is hold shift and select the two. And now we can go up to the top right and change the shader. It is set to standard. Let's hit this and go down to Poyomi. And now it will give us a couple options. I'm just gonna hit the newest one, Poyomi Tune. 
When we do this, it might take a sec and it might go blue a little bit, but you'll notice the textures become often a lot more detailed, a lot more bright and colorful, and overall just better quality. Poyomi is a really powerful shader on its own, and you can mess with a lot of really cool settings over here, such as the effects, the colors, shading, all sorts of things. And I'm pretty sure if you subscribe to him on Patreon, you can get even more effects, so go check him out. I'm going to quickly lock in these optimized shaders, which should take a couple seconds here, and done. Very easy. So with all the preparation and importing done, let's go ahead and set up the basic avatar controls for SDK3. Go ahead and click on your robot here, and we're going to move back over to the inspector. You'll see on the VRC avatar descriptor, we have a thing called view position. The view position is going to be this little gray ball that's right in front of us. Perhaps I can get a better view on it. You'll notice that the view position ball is underneath the avatar's mouth, which is not ideal. We would like it to be in between the eyes, because that's right where we're going to be looking at when we play the game. So let's quickly change that property to make it go up a little bit. As you know, in math class, Y is going to be up and down. So let's go ahead and change Y to, I'd say, about 1.72. And you'll notice the little gray ball has gone straight up to the eye level of the avatar. And this is personal preference. I like to usually have the ball out a little bit just to avoid clipping. But if you'd like, you can put it towards the center of the avatar's head. It doesn't matter either way. Once our view position looks good, let's move back over and go to the lip sync. An easy way to do this is just to hit auto detect, which will do everything for you. It will get all the visime, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it will get all of these uh, things, yeah. And I don't know much about this, but all I know is, is once you set that up, when you talk in game, your mouth go burr. So that is all for that. And now the most important stuff, the playable layers and the expressions. We're going to go ahead and customize this, which will show you all of these. And we need to make a customized FX layer, which we will do in a moment. And we're going to also open this real quick. And you will see that the menu and parameters just say none. So we are going to create three controllers. Go ahead and move to your assets. And we are going to right click and create VR chat avatars. And there's going to be an expression parameters as well as expression menu. We're going to need both of these. So go ahead and create one of each. I'm just going to name this one expressions. And now the menu, I'm just going to name menu. And once you have these two controllers, you can click on them and they should look like this. Now let's go back and click on our robot avatar and move back over to the inspector. And now under the expressions tab where it says none under menu and parameters, we're just going to drag in the ones we created. In this case, expressions under expressions and menu under menu. Easy, right? And last but not least, we're going to create a simple FX controller so that we can do gestures easily. In order to create this, we're just going to go down and hit Animator Controller. And I'm going to name this FX. I'm going to go back, click on Robot, and drag the FX into the default non-transform of the FX under the playable layers right here. And make sure to actually click this before you drag it. But now it'll work. There we go. And that, my friends, is all you have to do. Your avatar is now ready to upload. To upload the avatar, all you got to do is click up here to VRChat SDK, Show Control Panel. And right here, you will just enter your username or email, password, and you can see your content manager, which is going to be the avatars you upload, and if you want to delete any content or etc. I hope this tutorial helps some of you guys out, whether you're just new or getting a refresh. And in the next couple videos, we'll probably introduce some new topics and go over some more fun things that you can add to your avatar besides the bare bone basics. But it's always good to get the basics down in case you need to teach someone else. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.